I like to use lots of constants when I code in order to uh, avoid magic numbers, that is numbers that don't really mean anything to anyone who's not writing the code right then. And so in this instance we're going to have a single constant called second hand length that is the length of the second hand and everything else will be based on that constant. So if we change its value, the rest of the application will scale itself appropriately. Um, in this instance, I'm going to use 250 for that value. Now based on that then, we'll make our application square. So the side length of the app will be uh, just a little bit more than twice the length of the second hand, stored in the constant named app width. Okay, so our uh, application will have an app width by app width uh, square display window. Now the face will be just larger than the second hand but just smaller than half of the uh, in terms of its radius half of the apps width um, but since processing uses diameters when drawing circles we will have a constant named uh, face diameter that holds that. Okay so again this is our second hand here you can see that the face of the clock is just larger than that but still fits within the application's display window. Then we have the idea of the uh, minute hand and the hour hand. So our minute hand will be seven-eighths as long as the second hand and the hour hand will be three-fourths as long as the minute hand. Uh, so we use minute hand length and hour hand length for that. And we'll draw those with different stroke weights. So the second hand line will be a one pixel stroke weight minute hand two pixels and the hour hand four pixels. Finally in terms of all of this constants and uh, descriptions idea what we're going to do is uh, draw the numerals on the face. They're going to be drawn at the second hand length distance from the center and we'll use a 12 point sans serif font. Okay. Now let's go ahead and turn our attention to the methods that we'll need to make this happen. So except for the math which we've talked about, this actually is a pretty simple application. And so we're only going to have three methods in the whole app. We'll have our setup method, which will size the app, load the font, set the universal line characteristics, and so on. We'll have a draw method, which draws the clock based on the system time, so that's where all the action takes place. And then because we'll be using it quite frequently, we'll have a convert and translate method that takes a theta and an r parameter and returns an xy coordinate in a p-vector object. And that will convert from polar to Cartesian and then do that translation and rotation that we talked about earlier. So, given those three methods, let's go ahead and start coding it up. Okay, so let's take a look at our coding. What I've done here is actually coded up a bunch of the comments and a skeleton of the application. We'll kind of work on it bit by bit. First of all, let's tackle those constants, uh, which again we said would all be based on the second hand length. So we've created that constant. It's a float value, 250 pixels. Okay. Our application width then is going to be based on that value. And so we'll make it two times that second hand length better spell it right, and add 30 pixels to it so that it's wide enough. Okay. Now unfortunately that's going to give me a float value but in order to size my application I need an int. So we have to do a coordinate conversion or a type conversion rather. So I'm going to go ahead and do a type conversion and convert that from a float into an int. Okay application center. It's going to be simple. That'll just be our app width divided by 2. We don't have to worry about that. We'll put a point o on there to make it uh, a floating point value. Uh, face diameter okay, is going to go ahead and be our app width minus 5 pixels so that the face of the clock will fit on the screen and then we can go ahead and do our scaling for our minute hand length and our hour hand length. And so the minute hand length will make that 7 eighths of the length of the second hand. 
and the hour hand we're going to make three force as large as the minute hand. All right, and so those are the constants we're going to need in this application. And notice how they're all dependent on this initial second hand length value. If we change that, everything else automatically adjusts. Now our setup method, which we'll look at next, is so simple that I didn't even uh, leave anything to type here. We can just talk through it real quick like. So first off, it's a good practice in processing to do your sizing first thing on in the setup method. So we'll uh, set the size of the display window to be app width by app width pixels. Then uh, previously, we created a font using the font creation tool that processing uh, provides. And so in the setup method, we'll load and configure that font. Uh, again, it's just a sans serif 12 point font, nothing uh, particularly fancy there. Uh, we'll use that font for the text that we're going to draw later on. And I like to use the center center text alignment mode. That means that the uh, coordinate that we specify when we draw something in text on the display window is centered both vertically and horizontally in whatever string it is that we're trying to draw. And to me that makes uh, drawing text a lot easier if I just specify the center and let the uh, processing application take care of figuring out where everything else goes. And then lastly, here's sort of our global uh, universal line and shape characteristics. We're going to draw everything in white. Uh, we'll turn on anti-aliasing so that the uh, circles and diagonal lines look smoother. And we won't fill our shapes in. Simple. Okay, we're going to leave draw for last. So next we're going to look at our convert and translate method.